In this video, I'm going to go over how we draw Lewis structures for species that have an expanded octet. These are some of the guidelines that I use when drawing species that exhibit an expanded octet. Remember, it's uh, it's species with atoms in the third period or higher that will gain an expanded octet. Now in a previous video I also showed uh, Lewis calculations for drawing Lewis structures for more simple species. Um, and these are a little different, but they're almost entirely fail-proof when drawing Lewis structures with an expanded octet. So let's do a couple of examples using these guidelines. So if we want to draw phosphorus pentafluoride, we know that phosphorus will have an expanded octet. So the first thing that I like to do is I, as I determine the number of valence electrons that each atom in this in the species will have in its ground state. So I call that the halves. And in its ground state, phosphorus will have five valence electrons. In its ground state, fluorine will have seven valence electrons. And there are five fluorines here, so that will be 35 electrons. We add that together and that gives us 40 electrons. Now what I like to do is instead of instead of writing this as 40 electrons, I write this as 20 electron pairs. And you don't have to do this, but I find it easier when it comes time to draw in the electrons around each atom and also when writing in the bonds. So one electron pair has two electrons. Okay. So now we can draw a general structure that will describe what this molecule looks like. We know that phosphorus will be in the center and it'll be surrounded by fluorines. So the next thing that I do is I draw in the electron pairs around each of the peripheral atoms in, in order to make them have a stable octet. So we have 20 electron pairs to work with. So I, I've used three electron pairs around that fluorine. Six, I've used six now. So I've used 15 electron pairs out of 20. And of course, we draw in the bonds now, and each bond has two electrons or one electron pair. So we've now used all 20 electron pairs. And I think now you can see, you can perhaps see why uh, using electron pairs is more efficient and useful than just electrons by themselves. But anyway, that will be the Lewis diagram, Lewis structure for phosphorus pentafluoride. Okay, let's look at this anion. Again, we start off by determining the number of electrons that each atom 
in this species has in its ground state valence. So iodine and chlorine all have seven valence electrons, and there are five of those, so that would be 35 electrons. Plus, we have to take into account this additional electron, so that will be one more, which gives us a total of 36 electrons. or 18 electron pairs. And of course, the Lewis structure will have the iodine in the center surrounded by chlorine. And now we add the electron pairs around each of the peripheral atoms first. To ensure that they have a stable octet. So I've used 12 electron pairs. And of course we add in the bonds now. And that, and each bond is worth two electrons, or one electron pair. So that's another four electron pairs, which takes us to 16 electron pairs used. But we still have two electron pairs left over. So what we do is when we have electron pairs left over, we add those remaining electrons around the central atom. So in this case, they're added to the iodine, which accounts for all 18 electron pairs. Now, the question that you might be asking right now is how do we know that that is the correct structure when it's possible that we could have something that looks like this. Because after all, well, yeah, how do we know that it doesn't look like this? Well, it's a valid question, and we use something called formal charge calculations to determine which is the correct structure. And what formal charge calculations do is they take into account the known overall charge on the species by taking the sum of each of the individual charges on the atoms that make up the species. So we know that for this species the overall charge is negative one. So if we do a formal charge calculation, we should expect that the overall charge end up being negative 1. And whichever structure has a formal charge of negative 1 is the correct species. So we can calculate formal charge very easily. Formal charge, if we calculate the formal charge of this species, formal charge is just, on the iodine, the formal charge will be equal to the number of electrons it has in its ground state valence, iodine will be 7, subtract the number of free electrons that the iodine has, in this case it's 4, plus the number of bonds it has, in this case 4, which gives us total of or an answer of negative 1. 
Now we have to look at each each unique atom. And of course, the other unique atom in this species is chlorine. And that gives us, if we do the calculation, again, we have seven valence electrons in this ground state for chlorine. Subtract the number of free electrons, in this case, that's six, plus the number of bonds, which is one. And that gives us zero. And there are four chlorines, but four times zero is still zero. So negative one plus zero is just negative one. So we know that that species, as written, must be the correct structure for that anion. You can do the formal charge calculation for this other species as well. And I believe that if you do it, you'll end up with, uh, with something like 3. And of course, that does not make sense, because that is not the overall charge on the species.